With a population of over 200 million, Nigeria is the most populous black country on earth. We are diverse, strong, vibrant and mostly young. We are yet to reach the land of our dreams. We can write, tell and be our own story. From the economy, education, security to politics, you name it. We can build the Nigeria of our dreams if we work together. Join us on the run-up to discuss and proffer solutions to the issues confronting our polity every weekday. I am Bayo. I am Uche. And I am Nyamgul. We invite you to The Run-Up, 11 a.m. Monday to Friday on this channel. You're welcome back to the final lap of the program today. It's still The Run-Up and uh, we're taking you to what is happening uh, in PDP, the same PDP, and this time we're talking about the statement made by the River State Governor. He's been on the news for a very long time, for months now. It started from uh, uh, everyday launching of a project, and which we commend him for, to installment, installments or news is in installments. I nearly used the Nigerian version of that word, installmentally, <laughs> which they say never exists anyway. So giving us news in installments, what is happening in the PDP and what is happening possibly in River State. But he just said a very, very important, made a very important statement and said that River State has not decided who they were going to vote for. I'm sure it's not the entire River State, but the entire PDP of River State because he cannot talk to the other, uh, about the other parties. So the entire River State PDP uh, is still undecided who to vote for as president. They know who their governor is supposed to be, who to vote for as governor, and every other position that people are vying for in the state. But presidency, they are still keeping their fingers crossed, and they don't know yet who to vote for. I have Mr. Achike Chude here to comment on that, how he feels about that. Good afternoon, and welcome to the program, Mr. Chude. Yeah, good afternoon, young boy. Uh, I've just told the people that Wiki has been on the news for a very long time. Uh, sometimes people say for the right reasons, sometimes people say for selfish reasons, whatever divide you might find yourself. But this statement he made that even though his PDP, and a very strong one at that, and before today, it was known as a backbone in PDP. The whole PDP in River State is still not decided who they will vote for. What's your take on that kind of a statement? in the level of uh, politics that we do in Nigeria now? Yeah, well, uh, what is what is essentially saying is that um, uh, he is not going to abide by, by any party affiliation. Uh, you know, people have uh, in the past, some, especially some uh, big wigs within the PDP, have been calling uh, for him to be uh, sidelined from the PDP, for him to be expelled from the PDP, they've accused him of, uh, uh, you know, anti-party activities. Uh, obviously, that is where we are right now. If you're not working for the interests of, of uh, your party, uh, you know, and you're working in ways that are, are synonymous with somebody who is in the opposition, then you are not a party person. You know, though you might be in my name, but in, in, in words and deeds, he has shown that he's not a party person. Uh, uh, so obviously he has made it very clear where he stands. He does not stand with, uh, with uh, the structure of uh, the PDP at the national level with regards to the presidential you know, election. He is going to work against the interest of uh, the candidate of, uh, the, PD, of the PDP, Atiko Baka. He has made it clear several times. You don't need to be a soothsayer all this while to understand his leaning, you know, his direction. You know, but uh, as for rivers, people not uh, know who to vote for. The rivers, people know who to vote for. Uh, they, their minds are made up. The rivers, people are going to participate in, in elections just like you're going to have people from other states participate in the 2023 election. The number, in terms of the percentage, you might not know. But uh, those people, you know, because by now people have made up their minds. They already have their political leanings. They already have an idea who they are going to vote for and who they are not going to vote for. So Wiki already has an idea. 
you know, just like just as he has an idea who is not going to vote for, who is going to vote for for, for the president, so also do the reverse people. So this is just the semantics, but uh, it is very clear that uh, that uh, he's no longer a party man. I mean, in, in practical, in the practical sense of it. Okay, but um, I I don't see that as a, a very bad thing. A situation, not just what Wiki is talking about, but a situation where people can decide to vote for for people according to the individuals, not the party they belong to. But my worry is, is the Nigerian uh, populace educated enough to be able to select? you know, that they are voting governorship, for instance, for somebody in some other party, voting presidency, they are voting for someone else in another party. Have we reached that stage? Because if we have, it would have been a good thing, but have we reached it, in your own opinion? Well, well yes and no. Uh, yes, in the sense that um, if adequate education, you know, uh, is, is done by members of... Uh, uh, the PDP that are loyal to um, Wiki in the states, if they, if they do a rigorous campaign, then definitely they'll make people aware. People will be able to make that choice. Don't forget that um, it is exceedingly very important for Wiki uh, for him to have a successor. Uh, if you look at, uh, I mean, a successor of his own anointing, if you look at the way politics is played in Nigeria, are governors because some of them are the politicians who get elected into positions of uh, you know positions of authority uh, always want people uh, uh, the anointed candidates to succeed them uh, for the purpose of uh, like people have speculated to hide their tracks what uh, the, their misdeeds and so I mean from that perspective it is important that they send the message out and that the message gets to the right people and uh, the people will act accordingly and they uh, vote on the basis of uh, the you know the the enlightenment that has been done by uh, by the party uh yeah of course you're always going to have those people who might not be able to read and so it's always part of the challenge of uh, politicians and political parties part of their duty and responsibility is to create awareness is to educate the voters you know about uh, the activities of the party and the ideological leanings or the leanings of the party in general terms and uh, so that's why i said it is a yes and no you know, if once they have sufficiently enlightened and educated the people, the people should know what to do. You know, and, but you're always going to have those people who are going to make a mistake. So you're always going to have that. Uh, don't forget that um, in, uh, in, in uh, when Obasanjo was going for the second term, that was exactly what happened. He had an arrangement with, uh, the, with, the, with the AC and then, uh, you know, those that were in control of uh, the politics of uh, the Southwest. You know, had an arrangement with the governors then and uh, with Tinubu, the national leadership of the party, and that they are going to vote for the uh, for him at the presidential level, and that they will vote for at the other level. They will not vote for PDP. They will vote for at uh, the the AD governors. I think it was AD then, yeah. but that was not the case because um, uh, the the president, uh, the, the PDP carried both the presidency and the governor. The people will tell you that there were intrigues there, so it's always very risky. If you do it that way, you could create confusion in the minds of uh, people, uh, you know. And uh, so, but I think they are willing to take the risk. But um, this education that you're talking, the awareness campaign, should we leave it, or should it be left in the hands of political parties? Should it be the PDP educating people on how to select wisely, or there should be a neutral body that can educate people generally on how to decipher between uh, what they want and what they are being impressed to do? Impressed upon, obviously, right? the PDP, obviously, in their education, the PDP is going to insist that... Um, uh, that they vote for if, PDP. if you're talking about voting wisely, that uh, you know, voting for the PDP candidate is a wise decision. You know, but the reality, as it is, is that um, education of the electorate has never really been left in the hands of uh, the political parties. Uh, we know that it is their primary responsibility because they are the ones that are canvassing for votes. INEC is not canvassing for, for votes. You know, uh, civil society organizations are not conversing for votes. So the people that need the votes, the people who are either going to be the major recipient or beneficiaries of uh, elections or the major losers of elections are the politicians. You know, so, uh, they, 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 so when they, they educate, they are going to educate their own voters and they are going to try to educate other people uh, to try to look at uh, their own parties as uh, the parties, 
you know, that uh, we that are best that will be best in terms of a meaningful uh, engagement with the Nigerian polity when they are in government. But we have the National Repetition Agency whose responsibility it is also to enlighten people and to make them aware of their duties and patriotic responsibilities as citizens who would participate in the election. And the civil society have also been engaged in, uh, you know, uh, enlightening and uh, uh, educating the public. Uh, they have done that consistently and they have done a very good job of that. And then the media, you people also have uh, also played that role. So it's not something that can be left in the hands of political parties. It has never actually been left in the, uh, in the hands of political parties. But we all need to do more, both political parties, uh, but those ones are partisan. But for civil society, you know, the national reputation, you know, uh, agency, you know, the media and the rest, they tend to, they tend to be less partisan. So their kind of awareness and education, I think, is even much more important. So what is the Joint Action Front doing? You are, you are less partisan. Uh, no, no. Yeah, no, no, we, we, we have always, for us, you know, we have always uh, called the uh, Nigerians to uh, be patriotic. We've always called them uh, to, 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 be, to be discerning when it comes to making uh, political choices and making the right kind of choices. You know, and uh, I'm also, you know, a member of uh, the Guild of Public Affairs Analysts, Japan. You know, under that platform, just last week, Saturday, we were on the, on the streets of Ikeja with banners and with uh, leaflets, uh, you know, uh, to, enlighten, uh, to enlighten and educate the citizens on their, you know, responsibility, urging them not to uh, succumb to the uh, to the you know to the sale of, to the buying of uh, you know or the sale of their votes and to also ensure that there's true violence. So this is what we do. That's why I was talking about uh, the activities of civil society. So we have been doing that. Okay, and we well, we'll continue to do that uh, even long after the election itself. Okay, thank you for the good work and thank you so much for being a part of this show today. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking to Mr. Achike Chude, who eventually is the last guest for today. Uh, but I'd like to also remind you what we told you yesterday, what the information we brought. But the song we talked about yesterday is being played everywhere now. But maybe if you were watching it with uh, another f set of eyes, watch it with the eyes of the fact that whatever talent you have, use that to contribute to making Nigeria better, to preach the gospel of one Nigeria, the gospel of freedom, the gospel of uh, free and fair election, the, whatever gospel you, not, you need to preach to make sure that Nigeria stays proud, Nigeria stays united, Nigeria stays as the giant that it should be in Africa and even in this world. Now, musicians came together, Two-Face, very many known names, Two-Face, uh, Simi, Timmy Dakolo, and the rest of them, they came together, did a song that blew my mind, not just because it was good enough for dancing, but the lyrics told us a lot of things. If we're able, we'll take that song in the end. But in the meantime, this is where we draw the curtain on the show. We're hoping to be here again tomorrow and meeting you in good health that we can be together to talk about what is happening in our country. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. On behalf of my entire crew, I say thank you for being there. Let's do it again tomorrow. With a population of over 200 million, Nigeria is the most populous black country on earth. We are diverse, strong, vibrant and mostly young. We are yet to reach the land of our dreams. We can write, tell, and be our own story. From the economy, education, security, to politics, you name it. We can build the Nigeria of our dreams if we work together. Join us on The Run-Up to discuss and proffer solutions to the issues confronting our polity every weekday. I am Bayo. I am Uche. And I am Nyamgul. We invite you to The Run-Up, 11 a.m. Monday to Friday on this channel.